You sent me a report the other day, and I can't remember who wrote it. I should have um, looked at this, about xenon-133 and cesium-137 releases into the atmosphere from Fukushima. And they said that regarding xenon-133, which is called a noble gas, and I can explain that to the audience in a minute, what that means, we find a total release of 16.7 E becquerels, which is the largest radioactive noble gas release in history, not associated with nuclear bomb testing. There is strong evidence that the first xenon-133 release started very early, possibly immediately after the earthquake, and the emergency shutdown on 11th of March at 6 a.m. The entire noble gas inventory of reactor 20 units, 1 to 3, that's 1, 2 and 3, was set free into the atmosphere between the 11th of March and the 15th of March 2011. The largest release in history. Um, do you want to comment on noble gases, Arnie, what they are and what that would have meant to the population of Japan? Yeah, noble gases are um, um, are in the fuel, but they're held inside the fuel as long as the zircaloy cladding is in place. But what the uh, what that report and it's a phenomenal report, it's breathtaking in its um, in its analysis. Uh, what that report says is that the fuel failed very soon after the earthquake. You know, they were seeing it within the very first hour. And that leads, uh, a lot of us have thought that Unit 1 had problems right from the get-out, that it wasn't the tsunami, but Unit 1 had fuel problems and, and was in a meltdown condition even before the tsunami hit. And that confirms it. When they saw early releases of, of Xenon-133, um, that means that the clad broke, and, and it's a noble gas, so it just goes right out. It's not captured in the water, it's not captured in the air, and it goes right out. Then later, probably three, four, five, ten hours later, as the fuel failed in Units 2 and 3, they had uh, additional spikes of, of, um, of xenon gases. What it does is it, uh, it, it's, the, it's a cloud. It's a xenon cloud that moves with the weather, and it bombards people with, um, with external gamma rays, which are really powerful x-rays. Um, the, so the predominant exposure from, from these are that they bombard people with, uh, with x-rays. Um, they also then, as they decay, they turn into iodine-133 or, or uh, um, strontium-90 as a krypton. Krypton-90 decays to strontium-90. So there's other isotopes that then have a second shot at you. But the noble gases are a cloud that bombards people from the outside. We found that after Three Mile Island, a uh, dramatic increase, a measurable, statistically meaningful increase, in lung cancer, in people that were in that cloud, that shows up about three to five years after the accident. Yeah, um, xenon actually converts and decays to cesium, and krypton decays to um, yeah. strontium. So, I, let me explain what noble gases are from a biochemical and medical perspective. Noble gases do not combine chemically in the body. Um, the, but they are absorbed actually through the lung and I used to use xenon for ventilation perfusion scans in my cystic fibrosis patients to see what areas of their lung were all clagged up with pus and, and, and collapse of the lung and what areas were still being ventilated and perfused with blood. But the noble gases xenon, krypton and argon are in fact absorbed from the lung and we use xenon these days um, to measure fatty deposits in the body because xenon, well, they're very fat-soluble. So they tend to go and dissolve in the fatty deposits of the body, which are mainly located in the abdomen and upper thighs, which is exactly where the gonads, the testicles and ovaries, are situated. And because you talked about they give out huge doses of 
what you would call X-rays, gamma rays. They are bombarding the genes in the eggs and sperm with radiation which can induce mutations and cause down the time track through generations genetic diseases such as cystic fibrosis, diabetes, hemochromatosis, dwarfism, inborn errors of metabolism, uh, phenylketonuria. In fact, there are 2,600 such diseases. And it's important to know, for people to know that evolution took place when the Earth was much radiologically hotter. And so mutations occurred which were advantageous to a, 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 an environment like fish develop lungs and birds develop wings. But the truth is most mutations are deleterious. They cause disease. Very few are advantageous. And, of course, evolution took place over eons and eons and eons of time. But what we're doing by um, fissioning atoms in nuclear power plants and bombs is increasing dramatically the background level of radiation um, in, in, a, in a most artificial way, which will inevitably induce deleterious mutations, which will be passed on through the generations um, and cause, if you like, random compulsory genetic engineering. So people need to know what these noble gases are and what they do 